Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a few videos to bring to you this morning. And today is Wednesday, March the 24th, and it's 9.57 a.m. Now, as I was putting these all together, uh, it's so strange how the Lord is working today. I mean, because I was praying and saying, Lord, sorry. <laughs> My white hairs, they break off, thank God. <laughs> and then they, and I'm like, oh, there's another white hair. <laughs> they can break off all they want. Okay, sorry. Okay, these, um, my emails have been leading me to get into scripture. And uh, Chris sent, uh, Chapin sent me some. I guess you'd call them, well, he's called them revelations from the Lord, but I'm a little doubtful that they're, they may have been inspired by the Lord, but anyway, I went to Facebook to read them, and they were like, on and on, and teeny tiny little print, well, unfortunately, my left eye is not doing so good, and it's okay, when I really have to read little print for a little while I can close my left eye and see it okay but I can't do that for a really too long article so I'm just gonna they were about how women should not wear a lot of jewelry a lot of um hair product like cut coloring your hair uh you know these people have been spraying their hair all these different weird colors or even maybe dyeing them dyeing your hair um uh, super bright red like i have done in the past not intentionally but it just came out redder than a normal color and of course dressing appropriately and i thought you know what uh Chris, I can't read all this, so I'm just going to summarize it. And I got the thought in my head, I wonder who put it there, to read you what is Proverbs 31 woman. Because that is exactly what we're supposed to do. Is the, For the ladies, let us be Proverbs 31 women. So I will read it, and you can go to it anytime you wish. And um study it if you need to all right description of a worthy woman and what do we want to be for jesus worthy let us be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the son of man that's luke 21 36 if you don't know all right who can find a virtue? I'm sorry, this is Proverbs 31. It starts in verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? And I'm in the King James Version. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She will do... Oops, wait a minute. I read that already. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So back then, I guess... She went out with whatever money he gave her, or perhaps she made butter and cookies and traded them, or oh, bread. Maybe they didn't have cookies back then, but, you know, whatever. Traded it for wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands, sewing the family clothes or curtains or whatever. You, you equate that to today's uh, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 31 woman. Verse 14. She is like the merchant's ships. 
She bringeth her food from afar. Hmm. So she's willing to walk quite a distance to get her family meat that they don't raise or things they like that she can't make, perhaps. You try to, how would you put that into today's Proverbs 31 women? I'd like to hear your comments, ladies. Think about it. Verse 15, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Well, clearly she doesn't give it, give them meat while they're in bed asleep. What it means is she gets up to put the roast in the oven. I'm sure back then it took a lot. Well, I mean, it takes a while to cook some things and they... It used to be that people ate a big breakfast, a moderate lunch, and a, just a snack for supper. We do it just the opposite here nowadays, most people. All right, so moving on to verse 16. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. So how would you equate that to today? Maybe you don't have money to go buy a field. Maybe back then it was what he could give her or what she could earn from what she made. Maybe she could make extra clothing to sell. Took that money and bought a field, planted a vineyard. What could be done like that today? She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. Sounds to me like she works out a little to strengthen her arms. Girdeth her loins with strength. Now, that could mean walking daily to keep your legs up, finding those little weights, and I don't know, however you can strengthen your arms and legs, you do it. To stay strong and healthy. You see? That's in the Bible. Could you believe that? But we shouldn't be excessive about any of this. That was the point of those articles. Being excessive. Okay. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out, not out, by night. So she works, she burns both ends of the candle, uh, so to speak. And I don't believe in doing that, but perhaps if it's winter, you know, that's a whole different thing because you don't have much light. So you have to burn the candle at night to study the word. In other words, we stay up late, late as we need to to get some word in and maybe getting up early in the morning is to spend time with the Lord. She's getting meat in her so she can share it with her family, her children. Think of it that way. Okay. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. Okay. Spindle I get. If you know the story of Rumpelstiltskin, <laughs> well, that's a good example. That's the only place I've seen a spindle. Well, maybe old movies. But anyway, they spin threads into fabrics. And her hands hold the distaff. I got to know what that is. I just got to know. Let's see. Her hands hold the distaff. 6418. A masculine noun. Heart, staff, distaff. Whirl of spindle, stick, district. The whirl of spindle, stick, B, district, circuit. Okay, apparently when you're making that the round wheel go around. You're holding a stick to keep the thread 
doing its thing. That's all I get out of it. A woman's, the whirl of a woman's spindle. We could try another version. Let's see what it says. Let's try, um, we're on 22. We're on, we're on 19. Okay, let's go to New Living Trans, uh, New King James. Nineteen. It says distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. Okay, so they didn't change it. We'll just stay there. So I have to keep going down, find the right scripture. Verse twenty. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. So. As Christians, we do the same. We reach our hand out to the poor and to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. So apparently, scarlet fabric was heavy, like wool maybe, a very thick fabric that she could make coats out of. Verse 22, she makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Again, there's a meaning to that. Your clothing is um, fine linen. I'm sure that um, you could do a study on fabrics in the Bible days and get more understanding out of that. But uh, since we're talking about a good godly woman, we know purple represents majesty or royalty. So she's saying uh, she's like royalty for her husband. And in our case, it would be for Jesus. Not that you have to go around wearing purple, because we know nowadays what purple represents. That's just terrible. I hate it the way Satan has taken the things of God, like the rainbow and purple, and made them into something evil, or something that represents someone evil, that does something they shouldn't be doing. All right, Proverbs 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. How about that? Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Can we be this way, ladies? I hope so. I try really hard. <laughs> she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She doesn't sit around snacking. She, this sounds like a very hardworking woman to me. She doesn't have time to be idle. <laughs> So we, I guess we shouldn't either. Now there's nothing wrong with taking a break. You're cleaning your house. You're doing your ministry work. You're doing whatever. Bible study. Even at work, they give you a break. And if you brought yourself a sandwich, you eat it. That's not talking about not eating any bread or, you know, never stopping for a break. All right. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. A good, a good husband should do that. He should recognize her, his, his wife's godliness and willingness to dress well for him. 
not showing cleavage or dresses too high up or anything that shows your midriff and no ear uh not piercings let's talk about piercings for a minute do you think that god finds it pleasing for women to have piercings in their eyebrows up here and in their lips or in their nose or their tongue it's quite gross and disgusting and it's it's meant to make you look sexy the more jewelry the more attraction you have to others okay so that's why i say keep it minimal for him be beautiful for your husband but not to attract others and if you don't have a husband yet you want to look like someone who's not your husband's not going to have to worry about being jealous of you so it goes for single women as well if a man is looking for a godly woman of course right now we're looking at going to heaven we want to go be with Jesus. Right now, our goal should be to please him. We want to be worthy of him. Remember? Okay. So think of him as your husband. And don't worry that you never got married. It's okay. Because what you're fixing to get is way more than the best marriage on earth. Okay. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. That's in quotes. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Okay, that's the end of this video. I plead the blood of Jesus over it and over each and every single one of us and all our devices. And with that, I'll say, uh, oh, and our internet connections, with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll be back soon. I'll talk to you later.